Hi friends, proximal tibia fractures when treated with nailing can often be challenging. So usually when we see proximal tibia fractures which are in the metaphyseal part, there's an anterior spike like this. So this spike is in the antro inferior region of the proximal fragment. And this is the desired trajectory for the nail that we want. But what happens when we insert the nail? The moment nail goes into the diaphasis, something like this happens. Like the anterior spike tends to open up similar to the phenomena that happens in subtrochanted fractures with reverse oblique fragment. So this happens because our entry is bit anterior. When you want to treat these fractures with nailing, first of all, clamping of the fracture is critical. Because when you clamp it, you tend to reduce the spike and your entry goes more proximal and more posterior. So your ideal entry point should be at the anterior most rim of the tibial plateau, not in the extra article part. And always prefer suprapetalar nailing in these cases because then only you'll be able to hit this point. Otherwise, you'll tend to go through the anterior tract, which will tend to deform your reduction once the nail has been completely inserted. Same thing for the transverse fractures also. When you insert the nail, there will be anterior opening like this. If you go through the anterior and inferior entry point. So again, the desired trajectory is the area which is a bit posterior. That means at the anterior most extent of the joint line. And sometimes the fractures are so unstable that even after a good entry point, the fracture tends to open up anteriorly. In that scenario, you can place a polar pin or a polar screw in the posterior half of the proximal fragment. And it has to be close to the fracture site like shown here. For the previous injury pattern also, you can place a polar screw which has to be close to fracture and in the posterior half of the intramedullary canal. That will prevent the anterior opening of this fragment or the hyperextension of this fragment. The screw will block the migration of the proximal fragment anteriorly. Now coming to the AP view. Whenever we have a good reduction, we want the nail to be perfectly seated inside the axis of the proximal fragment and inside the axis of the distal segment. So in this situation, I will recommend a central entry point which is just medial to the lateral tibial spine. That means somewhere here or better to say that it should be central in the proximal fragment. Like here you see then your reduction will remain satisfactory even after the nail has been inserted. But sometimes the proximal fragment has some translation. And in that scenario also, I will recommend to go centrally in the proximal fragment. Don't follow the axis of the distal fragment. Follow the axis of the proximal fragment because ultimately when the nail goes inside this segment, it will realign the proximal segment according to the distal segment. The moment the nail gets inserted into distal segment, it will realign the fracture like this. So there should not be any confusion regarding this. But sometimes the fractures have angulation and there is variable combination either on the medial side like here it is medial or on the lateral side. So when the combination is in medial side, the fracture will tend to have a varus deformity. In that scenario, we want the nail to enter in the proximal fragment in line with the varus deformation. That means your trajectory has to follow the deformation of the proximal fragment and your entry has to be slight medial, not lateral. So if it is varus deformation with medial combination, go for slight medial entry, just medial to the midline, not a very far medial entry. So the simple trick is to feel for the patellar tendon insertion and you have to be on the medial edge of the patellar tendon when inserting the guide wire. In Siam, you have to see that the guide wire is going in line with the deformation like shown here and then the moment you insert the nail into distal segment the nail will automatically realign the proximal fragment in slight valgus or neutral position and in case of medial combination we want it to be slight valgus not a gross valgus but a slight valgus of few degrees so that further collapse in the medial direction will not happen on the contrary when there is lateral combination like in most situations we want the nail to go in the direction of deformation. Like here, the proximal fragment is tilted in clockwise direction. So we want the nail trajectory also to be clockwise. Here, the entry point has to be slight lateral. That means you feel for the patellar tendon and insert the guide wire along the lateral margin of the patellar tendon and, and follow the direction of deformation of the proximal fragment. That means the valgus angulation that is happening here and then insert the guide wire. 
and then the sequential steps of proximal reaming, canal reaming and everything. And after that, when you insert the nails, see something like this will happen. That means the nail will act like a reduction tool. It will realign your fracture in slight varus or neutral position. The, these fractures have tendency to go into valgus deformation. So we have to err towards slight varus deformation. And if you have gone for a lateral entry, you will definitely induce a neutral or slight few degrees varus alignment that will actually help in the healing process and prevent further valgus collapse of the fracture. So it is critical to see in the pre-operative radiographs whether the fracture is having a medial combination or lateral combination and the direction of deformation. Sometimes the combination is there on both medial and lateral sides. In that scenario, the perfect thing you can go for is to reduce the fracture first or at least realign. Then check for the axis of the proximal fragment and insert the nail centrally along the axis of proximal fragment deformation. So if the fracture is angulating in valgus, then ensure the nail goes like this, but through a central entry. And if the fracture is going into varus, then ensure that the nail is going like this, but again with a central entry if the combination is similar on medial or lateral sides. So that should be clear. Now when we are going through suprapetalar entry portal, we have to ensure that the guide wire is just posterior to the anterior tibial plateau rim and that will actually prevent the anterior buckling of this fragment when the nail is inserted. So this is ideal for the fractures which have anterior spike like this or which are transverse in nature. And in AP view, I told you, you have to see which side is combinated. So here we don't find any cross combination on either lateral side or medial side. So entry point has to be central and it has to follow the axis of proximal fragment. Ultimately, when you mobilize the guide wire towards a distal segment, the fracture will, the fracture will realign itself automatically. So that will not be an issue. And sometimes despite of placement of guide wire posteriorly, the fracture still have tendency to angulate anteriorly. And in that scenario, you can place a polar pin or polar screw posteriorly that, that I've shown you in the previous slide. And then go for the locking of the proximal screws and distal screws. And only after that, you have to remove the polar pin. And polar screw can be kept and that is up to you whether you want to retain it or not. But the polar pin has to be removed only after you are done with the proximal and distal locking. Do not remove before that. Now another example here the surgeon was trying for here the surgeon was trying for a bit posterior entry and he was right in doing that. And he used this clamp also to reduce the fracture before proximal reaming and diaphyseal reaming. And prophylactically he had placed a polar pin also. In the AP view the fracture was not perfectly reduced but again the combination was similar on medial and lateral side. The combination here and here is similar. So again, he opted for a central entry and you see this was after definitive fixation. So central entry is the thing that I will recommend whenever the combination is similar or there's no combination and you have to match the axis of the proximal fragment. Do not tilt the wire according to the direction of the diaphyseal canal. Your wire has to be in the center of the proximal fragment. Minor division can happen here, but ensure at least in the entry part, it is central. And thereafter, you can place a polar pin or polar screw according to the displacement. But in most situations, this will not happen. This is the post-operative graph of the same case. You see the alignment is well restored. The translation which was earlier happening is not there because the proximal fragment is getting reduced when the nail is inserted into the distal segment. This is the lateral view. The thing that I've shown you here that a polar pin was placed posteriorly and the entry was bit posterior. But sometimes when you go for an anterior entry, even after putting polar pin or polar screws, the fracture will tend to open up anteriorly. So you have to ensure that the fracture is perfectly reduced when you are inserting the guide wire and it has to be inserted some way here. That means close to the anterior articular rim of the tibial plateau in lateral view. And if you have to err, err in the posterior direction, not anterior. And that will help in reduction of the proximal fragment unlike here when it is opening up. So this was a short presentation regarding the entry points in proximal tibial fractures treated with intramedular nailing. So preferably takeaway points are that you have to go for suprapetalar nailing and you have to ensure that the fracture is at least aligned and if it is difficult to align it then at least match the axis of proximal fragment when you are inserting the guide wire 
and guide wire it has to be central in most situations but when there is deformation like varus or valgus deformation depending upon the medial or lateral combination then you have to err towards medial or lateral entry and follow the axis of the proximal fragment if you have any queries you can just ask those in comments thank you